There are a lot of different mysteries in our solar system, and one of those mysteries is actually a very interesting object that has a very unusual shape. Today, we're going to fly through our own solar system and discover what this object is and why it has such a strange shape. Welcome to What the Math and enjoy the video. <laughs> And so what is this object that I'm talking about? Well, of course, it is a dwarf planet by the name of Haumea. We're going to go and take a look at it and find out what uh, shape it has and what it looks like. Let's actually just zoom through our solar system toward it. And here it is. Look at this beautiful and unusual object. Now, this is actually uh, almost exactly what it may look like in terms of shape and in terms of color as well. It's a very, very unusually shaped um, elliptical sort of a object. And the reason why it's so strangely shaped and why it's so elliptical is, you're about to find out, is this. I'm going to accelerate time just to show you what it looks like and also just show you the orbital paths here. And here we go. This is time scale of only about a thousand times as fast as, as usual. And this is really why it's so strangely shaped. It spins really, really, really fast. And because of its really fast spin, the shape, if you look from, um, from the polar region here, starts to basically being pushed out and creates this sort of a oblong shape. Um, it's very interesting because not only is it um, so strangely egg-shaped, I guess you could, it's not really an egg technically, it's technically an ellipse. Uh, but it's also elliptical if you look at it from the top as well. I'm going to pause this for a second. It's also elliptical here. And as a matter of fact, if it was if it was spinning even faster than this, the bulges that it has um, on its uh, sides here, so there's actually an elliptical bulge that is kind of hard to see, but if you were to move out a little bit further, you would see that there's actually, it, it does have an elliptical shape and it does have two bulges sort of sticking out. So if it was basically spinning even faster, uh, the distortion would create a dumbbell shape and it would then even separate into two different objects. It would actually create two dwarf planets, not just one. And so essentially this is um, what the shape of this really unusual dwarf planet looks like. And there's a lot of other really unusual things about it. We're going to talk about all of them in this video. But first, let's actually take a look at two of its moons. So this object also has its own moons. Um, and they are located somewhere near, near us. I just saw one of them a second ago. Okay, here's one. There's one right here called um, Hiyaka. And all of these objects are named after the Hawaiian uh, gods. And specifically here, uh, Haumea is the goddess of birth. She's the Hawaiian goddess of birth. And uh, these two objects are basically its progeny, its, uh, its children. And so this is one of them. It's not very large. It's, um, it's a relatively large asteroid, but it's not very big itself. And the second one is right there behind it so let's zoom into that as well and we're gonna go check it out so and this one here is called namaka so both of them are relatively similar in size they're not particularly large um, according to this simulation their size is uh, approximately 170 kilometers i think that's a little bit too large actually it's a, it's a little bit smaller than that um and haume itself um is a relatively large dwarf planet as well its radius um, here, this part, is close to about 620 kilometers or just over 400 miles, um, which is actually pretty large for a dwarf planet, so it's a relatively large uh, object. Its mass is about one-third of mass of Pluto or about one divided by 1400, so basically 0 .0, or less than 0.01% of the mass of Earth. So it's not very massive, but for a dwarf planet, it's actually pretty big. Now we're gonna go on its surface as well because I would like to see what the surface looks like. And what we know about th this particular dwarf planet is that it's actually very bright. And it's really bright because on its surface, it has a large deposit of what's called a crystalline water ice. And it's so bright, as a matter of fact, that it kind of looks like a snowball, um, even though the layer of ice on top is very, very, very thin, because most of this um, dwarf planet is made up of rock. It's actually very unusual for a dwarf planet to be almost entirely made up of rock, um, or basically silicates, and not really um, have any kind of ice layer. And so this dwarf planet doesn't have a light ice layer, but it does have really, really thin deposit of crystalline ice on the surface. 
And because of this, it's, it has a very large albedo and basically it reflects a lot of light and um, be, uh, something like 60 to 70 percent of uh, light is reflected from the surface and you can even see this dwarf planet if you have a large enough telescope. It's actually one of the brighter dwarf planets um, in our solar system. But at the same time, it also has a very unusually dark spot, and I'm going to try to find it. I think it's this one right here, that we don't really know much about, but we know that this dark spot most likely is either a result of an impact or possibly um, is something unusual and, and unexplained um, even today. So we don't really know why it has this dark spot, but you can kind of see this dark spot appearing. If you ever look at this planet, a uh, dwarf planet in a telescope, um, something like every four hours, you'll see suddenly the brightness disappears for a few uh, minutes because that's where you get to see the dark spot. So it doesn't reflect light as well. And so let's actually talk a little bit more about uh, how it was created and why it spins so fast and what actually happened here. So Haumea is also known as one of the largest uh, collision families. And collision family refers to um, a time or event in space when something collided with something else and created a large amount of asteroids. This is exactly what happened to Haumea. It used to be a much larger object somewhere in the solar system, and then it experienced a collision, very likely somewhere on the side, sort of this way, um, that increased its uh, spinning dramatically, but also threw off a large amount of asteroids. And this is actually uh, two of them right here. Where are they? Here's one, that's one of them. And here is the other one. But there's also actually quite a lot of other objects that we've discovered that were part of this family. And the reason we know that they're part of this family is because they have a relatively similar orbit around the sun and they're sort of not very far away from each other. So there's a few other dwarf planets we've discovered that were very likely a part of this collision family. And basically they probably have the same composition. They have this very similar um, density and uh, very similar size as well because when this object collided into a original Homea, whatever this object was called, I guess we don't really have a name for it, but uh, the much larger object that used to exist in the solar system, it sort of got split into relatively large pieces that are now orbiting around the sun. And one orbit around the sun takes Homei about 280 years. Now let's see if we can actually simulate this. I'm going to try to find the sun. Sun should be right behind us here. And we're going to try to see if we can orbit once. We're going to um, run through the simulation for over 200 years. And there we go. So it's about 280-ish, 284 specifically years, which would be one orbit around the sun. Uh, and its uh, orbit is not particularly elliptical, but um, the distance here is approximately 50 distances of Earth from, um, of Earth to sun, which is called astronomical unit. And so the average distance from the sun is something around 43 astronomical units. But currently, that is today, if I were to go back to today, currently it's uh, over 50 astronomical units away from the sun. So because its orbit is slightly elliptical, it does um, sort of differ from between 50, over 50 astronomical units to just um, over 30. And so in other words, it's relatively far away from the sun. And because of that, obviously, the temperature here is very low. Uh, the temperature on the surface is minus 250 degrees Celsius, or basically much, much colder than the surface of even Pluto. And so this planet or this dwarf planet is relatively cold and would be very inhospitable to our species. But what's really interesting about it is that because it's so cold, it should technically have a much different um, surface composition. Its ices should be not very bright. It should be a lot more red than it currently is. And um, it should be quite similar to Pluto, as a matter of fact. But for some reason, it's not very similar to Pluto. And it's sort of very unique in having a lot of what's called crystalline ice on the surface, which makes it so bright. And for this reason, we actually don't really know what happened to it recently, but it may have had a collision with something very recently that sort of warmed it up. Or maybe there's some other mechanism or some other object that actually warmed this up, um, warmed this dwarf planet up relatively recently and created a large amount of crystalline um, ice on its surface. Because crystalline water ice only forms at much higher temperatures. As a matter of fact, the temperature on the surface should be about 50 degrees warmer. And it's not. And so there's that mystery. We don't really know where the crystallized ice came from. 
And so Homi still has quite a lot of mysteries for us to discover. And um, there's actually some missions that have been planned to try to visit uh, this dwarf planet. And there's actually a mission that um, may be launched in 2025 that would take it about 14 years to get to Homi. So maybe by 2040, we'll actually uh, visit or at least have a flyby of this dwarf planet similar to the flyby of Pluto and learn a little bit more about it. Because if something had warmed up this dwarf planet, and that something is in our solar system, we need to know about it. And for all we know, maybe there is some sort of a relation to Planet 9 here that still hasn't been discovered. But anyway, I think that's all I really wanted to say about this unusually shaped but a somewhat cool dwarf planet that we have in our solar system. Let's actually take another visit uh, of the surface here and maybe do a little bit of a flyby of the surface just so we can see what it actually looks like in space as well. I'm going to remove orbits here. And so yeah, this unusually beautiful, unusually strangely shaped um, object is definitely something that we would like to visit one day in the future. And for all we know, maybe you will be the one planning this mission. And because of its strange shape and because of its really, really fast spinning, um, it's actually really interesting that landing on the surface of this planet, especially in the equator, might be relatively challenging. But at the same time, uh, the gravity here or I guess the acceleration you'd experience by standing here would be much, much, much lower than if you were to stand in the polar regions. And so uh, it's very possible that if we actually end up um, launching a mission that will try to land on this dwarf planet, uh, you or we will need to actually try to use uh, slightly different calculations from usual calculations on how to land on this unusually shaped but also very fastly spinning object. And before we finish this video that I'm actually running at a ridiculously highly accelerated speed, uh, let's actually briefly talk about who also discovered this dwarf planet. And um, there's actually two teams that may have been possibly uh, responsible for the discovery, but uh, this also created a bit of a controversy because both teams claim to be the first. One of those teams was Mike Miller's team, and this is a person who also was responsible for killing Pluto as a planet. His Twitter um, account name is Pluto Killer because he discovered Sedna, and because of his discovery, we later realized that Pluto was not alone, and we created the term of dwarf planet. So his team also discovered this particular object using observations from their telescopes in Hawaii, and actually this is why the um, Haumea has a name Haumea, because Hawaiian telescopes sort of discovered um, this object. But also there was another team in Spain, and this was a person by the name Jose Luis Ortiz Moreno, um, and he used observations from Sierra Nevada Observatory, uh, but at the same time, he also claimed to be the first to discover this object. And because there was a bit of a drama going on between those two teams, the Astronomical Society decided to kind of just not name either team and instead name this object Homé because that was a more appropriate name. But when the International Astronomical Union was basically announcing the discovery of Homé, they actually um, avoided naming a specific team or a specific person responsible for the discovery. So I think both teams today claim that they were the first, and we, I guess we'll probably never know who was the first and what exactly happened there. But I think despite of this controversy, it's just important to realize that uh, sometimes competition is actually good for us, and sometimes it's re really good to have several teams trying to find the same sort of thing, because then uh, we'll have a much more higher quality product at the end. And this is actually the result of both teams trying to look for an object and then comparing the results. And now we actually know a lot more about Homea than we did a few years ago because um, several teams compared their results together and they were able to not only calculate the mass and the size of this um, object, but were also able to find other objects in the vicinity and uh, realize that Homea was a result of a very large collision uh, now known as a Homea family. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little video and I hope you learned something more about Haumea and this unusually shaped object in our solar system. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for all of your support and for the support on Patreon as well. And I hope in the next video we'll talk more about one of the other dwarf planets that you will learn about as well. And if you still haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe because there's more space videos coming in the future. I'll see you guys in the next video and as always, game you later and bye bye.